My name is Michael Childress, and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Australian National University in Canberra. I work as part of the Supernova Research Group at ANU under the Castro Dark Universe theme. My work focuses on studying Type 1a supernovae in order to make them better tools for measuring the expansion history of the universe. Our understanding of Type 1a supernovae was aided by our recent study of Supernova 2012-FR in the nearby galaxy NGC 1365. Type 1a supernovae marked the explosive death of a white dwarf star in a binary system. The supernova event provides energy to fuse carbon and oxygen from that white dwarf star into heavier elements such as silicon, calcium, and iron. The core of the material ejected by the supernova is hot, dense, and opaque. As the material expands and becomes less dense, these outer layers become progressively more transparent. This lets us see deeper into the ejected material. As this opaque boundary, or photosphere, moved inward, we monitored the supernova spectrum looking for signatures of particular elements, specifically silicon and iron. What was very exciting about this supernova is that the silicon appeared to be created in two distinct layers. The outer layer was much thicker than ever observed in any previous supernova. We also saw that the iron in the ejected material remain closer to the core. Our observations of this supernova have ruled out some theories for how the explosion might have occurred. Studying the elemental composition of the ejected material taught us about the physics of supernova explosions. While studying the physics of supernovae is important, they also play a crucial role in measuring distances in the universe. It turns out that supernova 2012-FR is almost unique in this regard. Essentially, all Type 1a supernovae reach the same peak brightness before fading away. This makes them excellent examples of what we call standard candles. These objects allow us to measure distances. We know how a candle of a particular brightness grows fainter as it is moved further away from us. So if we know the true brightness of the candle, and we measure its observed brightness, we can calculate its distance. This raises a critical question. How did we measure the true brightness of that standard candle in the first place? What we need is an independent measurement of the distance to these supernovae. Fortunately, there's another type of standard candle that astronomers have studied in great detail. These are called Cepheid variable stars. A Cepheid variable star pulsates at a frequency that is tied to its absolute brightness. The Hubble Space Telescope allows us to observe Cepheids in nearby galaxies, including 50 Cepheids which have been identified in NGC 1365, the host galaxy of supernova 2012-FR. With this independent distance measurement to supernova 2012-FR, we can now calibrate the true brightness of all Type 1a supernovae. There are many different techniques astronomers use to measure distances in the universe. Each method provides a rung on what is called the cosmic distance ladder. Objects like supernova 2012-FR that let us connect adjacent rungs are extremely rare. This supernova has become a member of an elite class of supernovae whose host galaxies have had their distances measured independently. For this reason, our observations of supernova 2012-FR will increase the precision with which we can measure distances outside our own galaxy.